Since you're so nervous, Kaya, why don't you take the lead? Ah, oh, shit. Now you've caught me. I'm too nervous to remember what episode this is. What is this, 180? 181? Yeah, boy. Oh, no. Yes, Not sir. That whole okay, boy. So song and dance. Who cares? Okay. Well, first question. Important topic of the day. Do you guys think that the Kim Jong-un, who just uh, was seen at a ceremony of some sort and got photographed, do you guys think that is the real one or a fake actor? It has to be fake because the real one is partying with his 2000 woman harem. Hmm. Is that true? Have you Has not read... sided with his harem? Yeah, have you read the New York Post? According to North Korea, Kim Jong-un <laughs> is currently hanging out with a 2,000-wide woman harem. And he's doing great. Well, that's so, good to hear, I guess. Uh, it sounds like yeah. a fun vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's there to not believe? If, no, if oh, North wait. Korean media says it's true, it has to be true. That's all there is to all it. Right, so, yeah, getting rid of our, all of the propaganda, like tinge to that or whatever he did have surgery correct like that's proven like even yes. the north koreans are saying he has surgery yes so he went straight off the operating table into his 2000 person harem so is what the original saying. the original story according to korea was after his surgery he was enjoying a nice staycation and everyone was like <laughs> oh he's dead he, he he's 100 percent dead he is not he's not vacationing at home He's he's fucking dead. Then they said he's staying at home to avoid the coronavirus and possible infection because he doesn't want to get it after his surgery. And that also led people to say, OK, he's he's fucking dead. That's bullshit. And then North Korea said he's hanging out in his harem featuring 2000 women. And of course, everyone still thought, yeah, he's fucking dead. <laughs> So this new thing of him being photographed at an event, I have no idea. But out of the three possibilities of what he's doing, knowing North Korea and its goofiness, I'm going to assume he's hanging out with 2,000 broads and they're playing foosball and what the fuck ever you do in Korea. Wait, so you think, he, you think he's not dead? Uh, I don't know. I got to be honest. It's, I, it's, it could be it's really hard to say. Their North Korean propaganda is working if we can't discern <laughs> or if none of the like the top governmental agencies can discern truth from fiction. Yeah. I think he's dead. I'll go on. Well, you, provide your reasoning. Uh, just because, you know, I haven't seen him. Hmm. <laughs> Well, that's pretty good reasoning. Yeah, he can't he, exist if I don't see him. He hasn't been in Tampa lately, so... <laughs> yeah, he hasn't done his uh, normal <laughs> tours through the area. <laughs> I mean, so to be fair to the all the rest of us, we didn't just think not only because we didn't see him. It was also because, you know, China sent a whole health envoy to save his life. And then supposedly somebody on that team leaked that he was a, basically in very critical condition. So that's why we got that impression. Not just that he doesn't show yes. his face, I, I guess, I suppose. But yeah, it would be good. Oh, yeah, I know where it all stems from. But it's hard to like know for sure now whether he is dead or if he is in that harem, having the time of his life. I think that's him. And the reason is... Because why would you even need to hire an actor to make it look as if he's still alive? He has a sister, she would have taken over. They don't need him. It, is that who would have taken over? Did they say that's yeah, what would have What's she even taking over? Is she taking over the head of the harem? Like, she's going to be in that 2000 harem? <laughs> God. She's going to be enjoying that privilege? Jeez. She can't satisfy all those women, Kaya. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> it's, an, it's an obligation that they have to meet. Well, apparently neither can he. The man's heart gave out and he had to get an operation. Presumably, I mean, if you fuck 2000 I mean, women I think, a day. I think any man's heart. Yeah. Yeah, I think any man's could heart you, is going to Could you imagine if the propaganda was real and Kim Jong-un's heart problem came from him trying to fuck 2000 women all at once? That, what if he was yeah. just a smorgasbord of STDs or something? That's what got him. <laughs> I think he's a virgin. He very oh, well could whoa. be. I think the he dude's is. dead, Charlie. Don't slander him like that. <laughs> Too soon, bro. <laughs> he got laid. Why do you think he's a virgin? What would be worse for him, being dead or being a virgin? Probably being a virgin, honestly, for him. Yeah, he, he, you can't be a dictator and be a virgin. Yeah, that has to be like true. the greatest insult to that status. No, I, I'm, I'm sure he's that's raped totally his fair true. share. Oh, all right, well. 
<laughs> what? You th- why, why, why am I defending him? He probably is a, like a yeah, uh, just throwing that around like it's Sunday uh, yeah. business. Yeah, you know, whatever. He's got a few rapes here and there. No big deal. I mean, yeah, he, he, he's an awful person. He does. So probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanna I wanna make that clear for anyone listening. It's not that we're sitting here advocating Kim Jong-un or supporting any of their actions, but I personally just find the man fascinating and all the wacky shit that goes on over there. I don't think anyone's going to misconstrue anything we said as supporting Kim well, Jong-un. Well, hey, let, let's let's be fair and reasonable. If he does, in fact, have a 2,000-woman harem, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's an impressive number. I don't think all 2,000 <laughs> want to be there, though. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's the other question on it. What do you think the other women are doing while he's, like, plowing some of them? Do they just live there and, like, play hacky sack? Or what do you Try do? Try to look busy. If you were a woman in Kim Jong-un's harem, what do you do most of the day? Hope. I'd treat it like a sporting event. I'd be, like, cheering people on. <laughs> I, no, I, w- I would be trying to stay out of the limelight. Like, yeah, just stay back. Try to not get his attention. I'd be just scared that he's gonna feed me two dogs on a whim. Mm. If you don't uh, please him yeah. properly. I mean, didn't he literally do that to his own uncle? Or was that was his uncle the one he had executed by? His a... uncle didn't pleasure him well enough. No. <laughs> so he executed him. He wore him. a wig and snuck into the harem. He, he like killed his <laughs> uncle and his half brother and he fed one of them two dogs or yeah. he had one of them shot. So or wait, sorry. The story, many such cases. Wasn't? The story on two of those is uh, his half brother was poisoned at an airport by an assassin. Oh yeah, I remember that. Who's the yeah, one? he it was really it was weird because he um, it was some assassin who went up and wiped a handkerchief on his ear and it was poison. And he walked over to the airport security and he was like, hi, I've been poisoned. I need help. And they're like, <laughs> OK, we'll help you. And then I think like four minutes later, he was dead. Um, and <laughs> then the shit. other one and then the other one was I believe it was his uncle as a display of power. He sentenced him to execution and he shot him with an artillery cannon and he exploded. No, yeah. you must be thinking of a that. different yeah. uncle because I just looked this up. Kim Jong-un fed uncle to dogs and killed eight with piranhas during bloodstained rule. That one I did not know about. Yeah, what mm. the fuck is this about wow. the piranhas? God damn it, I wish I was no, that He really rich. is just a Bond villain. Who, even, who the fuck has a Jesus. vast full of piranhas at the ready? <laughs> <laughs> a super villain a man who's prepared yeah it's like an austin power shit oh yeah. yeah so in all fairness there's something to be said for uh you know dennis rodman for being buddies with this guy because wouldn't he even for all the money in the world wouldn't you be scared that in just a moment of drunk impulsiveness this guy would feed you to some animal even if you're good friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't put myself in that situation. I, I think Dennis Rodman is doing more for political relations with Korea than anyone in our government. I I think he's not a hero, but I think he's doing some really well, courageous do you, do you think shit. He, do you think Dennis Rodman was just squeezing in there so that he could be the next dictator once, once, uh, <laughs> once Kim Jong-un Could you imagine tomorrow we have a press conference, Kim Jong-un is dead, all hail the new leader of Korea, De- Korea Dennis Rodman. Yeah, last minute will adjustment <laughs> left the, the country to Dennis Rodman. <laughs> That'd be so incredible. Yes. Maybe that's why his sister is always so continuously sad looking. She knows she got snubbed out of the will. Yeah. <laughs> they decided the leader with a slam dunk contest and he won with flying colors. Oh, that'd be such a cool way of deciding that. <laughs> <laughs> as fucked up as he is, he probably may put Dennis Rodman and his sister in a fucking MMA cage and just let them fight or something. And Dennis went to town <laughs> for the sake of inheriting that dump. Then filled the ring with piranhas afterwards. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, man. Keep doing you, Dennis Rodman. You're the hero we need right now. Mm. So do you think, do you guys think that uh, if he is dead and the sister, sister Kim Jong-un takes over, do you think she's going to be just as evil? Oh, yeah. And dastardly? Yeah. Yes. It's the same mm. fucking family. Same. I don't know. Or, or could she possibly bring like positive change to the country? I Maybe know, she reopens the borders with South Korea and reunifies. I know a good chunk of analysts on it are saying that if he is dead, this might be the opening to take down the the regime. Because the, the regime started with Kim Jong-un's family. It was uh, uh, Kim... Oh, God, what's his name? Kim Il-sung. Il? It yeah. was. It, it started with Kim Il-sung, and then it was Kim Jong-il, and now it's Kim Jong-un. And a lot of people are saying if Kim Jong-un is, in fact, dead, 
then either his sister taking over or someone else around there might be the actual stepping stone to taking down the the dictatorship. So I well, what's knows? the name? I actually don't remember. I highly doubt it. I yeah, it, it's doubtful, but it's something. And I also think I that know. people are being very naive if they think that his sister would be any less worse just because she's a woman or something. I mean, she could be worse for all we know. That's that fam. That whole family That's is true. fucking fucked up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I really. I mean, it'd be nice if she was good. It'd be nice if everybody was good. Yeah, that's some um, wishful <laughs> thinking. <laughs> the world would be a better place no, if people learned right, to love yes. each other very much. Yes, ha ha ha. But specifically her, she's in like control of a giant country with like ninety five percent famished people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it would be no it would be nice if she was a good individual as opposed to everyone being good. Like a whimsical desire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair. That's still a whimsical desire. What do you mean? It's not. How <laughs> is it a whimsical desire to specifically want I one person to be good? Is nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, what? That's no different. What? All right. Whatever. I'm not arguing about this. I'm not on her side. I'm on my own side. I look after Jackson's interests. <laughs> Jackson's putting his name in the ballot to take over North Korea. <laughs> yeah. Vote for me if you want food. <laughs> <laughs> that's already the policy that's in pretty place. Good. Yeah, that's pretty solid. <laughs> She's sweating buckets over there. <laughs> Shit. I can't promise anything like that. I don't Fuck. have any food. Damn it. Laser eyes, maybe? How does he have access to food? <laughs> He's got a big whiteboard with all the ideas on it. Uh, flying blimps. No, that's stupid. <laughs> No. Okay. I really want to talk about this one. Have you guys followed Elon Musk's little Twitter escapades? Yeah, what the fuck's happening? Downfall? I Not heard rumors of it, but I don't know anything of what happened. Well, you should give a recap on it. Uh, yeah. He just started tweeting a bunch of random shit, and one of the random shit that he was tweeting was... Uh, he said, and I quote, Tesla stock price is too high in my opinion. And then this basically tanked Tesla stock and they lost 14 billion in value. And people. Wait, isn't that illegal? Wow. People were in the Holy shit. replies to him. There was one guy going, like, dude, because of this, I lost like $10,000. What are you doing? And he kept tweeting. Holy shit. He, uh, he kept tweeting, my girlfriend. I know there was a. Um I know when this happened, when he did that first tweet you mentioned, there was an incredible spike in Twitter traffic, like one of the biggest of the entire year. So I guess that makes sense if it destroyed their stock. Hmm. Well, so he also says, my girlfriend Grimes is mad at me. I am selling all physical possessions, will own no house. Rage, rage against the dying of the light of the consciousness. Fucking cringe. God damn it, dude. Now he sounds like a <laughs> Willow Smith or something. And the rocket's red Jayden, glare. Jayden. Sorry. And the rocket's red glare. The bombs bursting in the air. Oh, say does the star-spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. Uh, now give people back their freedom! In all caps. Is that the, is that the national anthem? Yes. It, yeah, it's the first verse of it. It ends in, give people back their freedom and all caps. It honestly sounds like it. Mm. And then it's, yeah, and the anthem ends with, Tesla stock is too high. I think Charlie's dog is trying to sing it. <laughs> yeah, she's having a, a she's real feeling concert mighty patriotic. Down there. <laughs> yeah, so I guess he got fucked up and drunk or something. And really fucked this company a little bit. But he does that like all the time. He Ever since he... Yeah. I was just gonna say, ever since he went on Rogan, man, he hasn't been the same. That one weed fucked him. <laughs> That's all it took. I feel like he almost enjoys fucking with the stock because... So he went on Rogan, he, he knew, he must have known, he must have been coached or somehow told beforehand that smoking weed and saying <laughs> something offensive would fuck their company, so he still did. Then he, like, get played around <laughs> with the stock price, he set it at, like, 420 just to impress his girlfriend at the time. Yeah. And now he's literally <laughs> he's literally just tweeting out ah, whatever, fuck the stock price. It's too high. <laughs> Which is the dumbest shit you could ever possibly tweet about your own company. So for all the people who ever got mad at me for dumping on this man, apparently he himself doesn't even like it. His own company. It sounds like he just got Does he Yeah. That that's a that's illegal, right? To make tweets about like uh, your company's stock, right? 
Like the SEC no. would be after that. It, it depends. It depends on context and what you're doing with it. So, for example, if he just sold a shitload of his own shares or all of his shares, and then he said, "Oh, by the way, this price is too high," that could be considered insider trading, mm, which okay. which is very illegal. That's what Martha Stewart went to jail for. Martha Stewart went to jail. Yeah, yeah she for, did for insider trading. Yeah. Basically, what you're not allowed to do is um, rig the stock market in your favor. So she joined like a, a prison uh, club. Not club. What do you call them? Fucking. Oh, st- <laughs> uh, what do you call them? Fucking gang. The gangs. Yeah. yeah. Gang. yeah. Well, she she fucking well, embraced it. Uh, the word that kept coming to my head then was like clan, like an Xbox yeah. clan or something. <laughs> she uh, was a clan. <laughs> yeah, she had a gamer she tag signed, in prison. She signed with yeah. TSM in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, are you Basket Weaver sixty nine? You're like the top fragger was, uh, in prison. Was but no, was, she um. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to ask, was she the one who held that uh, slavery-themed wedding, or was that the other one? The, I was no, that's Paula Deen. Or, yeah, Paula oh. Deen. That's Paula Deen. Betty Crocker. Paula Deen's Betty, Betty Crocker. Betty Crocker's been dead for like 100 years, yeah. I think. No, she hasn't. She's not dead, is she? <laughs> yeah. No, she's she's super dead. I'm pretty sure she's dead. I'll, I'll look what? it up, but I'm pretty sure she's dead. She's to, not dead. To be fair to Charlie, though, that's not a terrible guess. I guarantee you Betty Crocker would have had slaves as well, so. <laughs> yeah, she's she's mega dead. Like, she's been dead so fucking... She's been dead since before Paula <laughs> Dean was born. Oh, wait. Yeah, Betty... <laughs> Be- I was... Th- what, what's the other Betty, the actress that's Betty? Betty White. Uh... Yeah, Betty White. That's who I was thinking. Betty Crock is the the food company, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Betty Crocker's the the cake baking bitch. But yeah, back on uh, Martha Stewart. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Betty, uh, Betty, Betty White's <laughs> yeah, the slave owner. Some real strong feelings on Betty Crocker. <laughs> well, what the fuck else do you know her for? Her name's on the cake mix. That's it. Well, not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't degrade all of her accomplishments to that what she could have been a really nice person she i don't know i never nothing about her just goofing just gaffing <laughs> mm. oh well we were all wrong so betty crocker was never a real person <laughs> 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 i thought she died in like the 1920s or some shit no nah, it's just she when died the- during world war ii on the front lines <laughs> so the company was started in the late 1800s and they like modeled it around the idea of a woman that they named Betty Crocker. Oh. At least according what to. What do you mean, like the idea of a woman? Like they'd never met a woman before, <laughs> like in some creation. This of is theirs. what they look like. They have horns and they make cakes. <laughs> 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 so, I, okay, I wonder how many companies that use people's names, almost like mascots, like how many of them are actually made up and how many really existed? Like. Oh, like the what, Michelin Man. Right. Well, the Michelin no, Man's a giant I, marshmallow creature, Jackson. <laughs> I was, I was thinking more like, uh, was Uncle Ben's real? Uncle Ben, was he real? Was Aunt Jemima real? That's exact. I literally just Googled Aunt Jemima. So <laughs> was, I'm still was Aunt Jemima. Aunt what Jemima's the uh, the lady on the pancake syrup and pancake mix. Yeah, no, we yeah. don't have that. It's it's not entirely relevant, but I do know one off the top of my head. Hagen Doss is a made up word. I know that. Mm. It doesn't mean anything. So here we go. I got it for you. Anna Short Harrington began her career as Aunt Jemima in 1935. So she was real. Oh, oh, what about the the redhead from the burger place? Wendy's. Yes, Wendy's Wendy's. Wendy is real. Yes. And Wendy was, um, I think we talked about it on the show. Wendy used to star in commercials for Wendy's, but they pulled them because she was too fat. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i think we that's talked a, about that that's a real thing America. i don't i don't remember if we talked about it, that or not but she gave the wrong impression of the restaurant because she was overweight so they stopped running them but, but wendy's so a real, real quick person to go back to aunt jemima that does make her not a real person if they had to hire an actress to play aunt jemima no no they didn't hire an actress she just she died in 1935 she was real her, her name was anna short harrington so not so, that's not aunt jemima yeah that's not jemima and well, a short hair. It, Jesus, it's, also, like, it's like JK, it's it's like JK Rowling. Yeah, it's like JK yeah. Rowling. You can't say JK Rowling's not real. JK Rowling doesn't play JK okay, Rowling. She's she got a different is. name. This is a person with a different name playing Aunt Jemima. It's a, it's also, a I'm stage on Wikipedia. Name. It's a. 
it's a stage name, Kai. It's like Prince. Prince's real name wasn't Prince, but he went by okay, Prince. Prince is a real does, person, though. Why the guy does, behind Prince is. Why does Wikipedia say Aunt Jemima originally came from a minstrel show as one of their pantheon of stereotypical black characters? The character appears to have been a Reconstruction era addition to the cast. Given the racist history of the character, many consider Aunt Jemima to be an offensive embodiment of racist stereotypes and attitudes. Well, that's weird, because this one says Anna Short Harrington was a real person who began her career under the name Aunt Jemima by selling the pancake stuff. So maybe she was just a model for that character. I, I mean, maybe it's she's both. possible. So, I don't, so I don't no, know. what I mean is they created the character first and they hired someone to fill that role. No, it's possible. so this is her company. Well, no, then. Then that, no, I think yeah, th yeah, this can't I, I be real this because... Is her stage name. Yeah, it, it has to be. Name, Descendants like of <laughs> real Aunt Jemima... <laughs> Sorry. Descendants of real Aunt Jemima are suing the brand bearing her name. Wait, so it wasn't consensual? Really? What the fuck? Well, I mean, this is in 2014. Her descendants are suing. I mean, it's like a hundred years late, but yeah, they, she was real. This is so confusing. This is like a conspiracy. It really here. is. Yeah. I'm, I'm not up to date on my Aunt Jemima lore, and I'm starting to get lost in the character bios. Yeah, the lore goes deep. There is a lot of conflicting stuff on Aunt Jemima from what I'm seeing here. So wait, I, the important thing is though, did she make the pancakes? Ah, wait, hang on. <laughs> Jackson no, back on like, food again. Hang on. No, that's what, I, that's what I mean though. Did she have like an actual stake in the company? Well, I mean, I, I would assume so. So here it says Harrington continued to play the role for 14 years and she made enough money to buy a large house and rent rooms. Okay. So... So it had I mean, to be her yeah. company. Well, at least a good well, she, part of her. She would have, if that was her company, she would have 10 houses. It wouldn't be like a Wikipedia note saying she had a house. Well, if she came out in the, uh, the 1920s or whatever, there's no way she'd get any of that just for being a black woman. So, for the most yeah, well, part. You, you don't get that today just for being a black anything or a white anything. I mean, she, she, yeah. she actually did work for the company. Get <laughs> given houses. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, no, but I mean, even if she invented the recipe and I don't know, started the company or any of that oh. effect with all, yeah. all the stuff going on back then, it was very doubtful she'd make a shitload of money or be White houses is mm. cheaper back then? Yeah, but at the same time. I mean, they definitely were. You know, at the same time, back then, being a black woman wasn't the greatest thing to be in America. Oh, okay, so here's another person. Ethel Ernestine Harper was Aunt Jemima during the 1950s in person, in print, and in media. So, yeah, this is Lord. Yeah. She's like a Marvel Wait, hero. Wait, the 1950s? Where... Yeah, because the old, the other one, I guess she got too old for the role, and they had to bring in a new Aunt oh. Jemima. <laughs> So there's two Aunt Jemimas. Well, there's probably more now. That was in the 50s. Apparently it's yeah. like a title then, I guess. So, so it's like Lassie, <laughs> where every time the, the Aunt Jemima dies, they bring in another one and say, yeah, this is Aunt Jemima, always has been. Or, or it's no, like... No, I think a, it's more like Captain America. Yeah, where they just yeah. Fulfill their purpose she and passes then down the pancake batter, and it says Rosalie Moore also <laughs> portrayed the role of Aunt Jemima during the 50s. Well, a lot of bunch of people played Aunt Jemima. It's like the <laughs> wow. I like so, that. So she's like she's Doctor like Who James or James Bond. Bond. They just keep yeah. cycling them out. Yeah. It's like Aunt Jemima into the pancake verse, which is a bunch of multiverse. <laughs> License to bake. I watched the <laughs> shit out of that movie. <laughs> License to bake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she really is like James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of James Bond, you too could be as cool as James Bond with the right pair of underwear. I'm of course talking about Ooh. MeUndies, Andrew. Ooh, he's talking about MeUndies. Hi friends, you may have heard of MeUndies before, as they're pretty much on every podcast ever. But I don't give a shit about that, because now they're on the official podcast, which means that this is a serious pair of underwear. It's time to end your toxic relationship with tattered old undies. Me offy, me offies, me undies offers endless options for those looking to step up their undie game. You can choose a monthly membership, a build a pack, or you can even match your undies with your other half. No matter what you choose, you'll get a soft, sustainable pair of undies delivered straight to your door with free shipping. It's a win win all around. Me undies offers 
a great offer for any first time purchasers, which is 15% off and free shipping. It's a no brainer because they also have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, which will allow you to pick from any style you can imagine, such as unicorn or black. Me Undies prints are made for your type of self expression. You can get 15% off your first order with free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee by going to meundies.com slash official. That's meundies.com slash official. Boys, I mentioned a couple episodes back that they also have a button I really like on the website, which is choose for me. So if you don't care what print you get or you just like surprises like myself, they will send you a random pattern in your size. And they sent me not one, but two pairs of polar bear me undies. And I still wear them and they're still comfy. And I still like them. So that's my me undies story. Yeah, I literally only wear me undies. I don't even have un- any other underwear anymore. Thank you, me undies. Yeah. Not even yep, Q could you. design better undies for James Bond. Like me undies, only them. Comfy. That's right. Is it, so last last week you guys got up Australian, you know, terminology and everything. Undies is an Australian sl- like slang word. Wouldn't right? it be underoos? <laughs> no, that's what you guys use. I'm pretty sure. Undies isn't Mm. a slang term, like, native to Australia. Like, that's something everyone calls underwear. Yeah. (laughs) Is it? I thought it was just us. No. Fair enough. No, but you were getting a bus for adding, like, IES, like, E's on the end of everything. Before we jump on the grammar game, before we jump on the grammar game, I just want to reiterate, 15% off of your first order, free shipping, 100% satisfaction guarantee at meundies.com slash official. Okay, Jackson, go back to whining. Uh, undies, my word. You can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, what I get on... The reason why I get on Australian slang is because all of it really does sound like a child. You know, Barbie, barbecue, sick day, sicky. Undies. Breakfast, That's brekkie. why I was saying it. Undies sounds like a word that we would use, it's, to your credit. Yeah, it's, it's a cop. No, so it's, a, it's okay when you guys use words like that, but not us, because we're infants or whatever. Australians use because infant they words, but when be- you use undies, it's cool. Because No, okay, so because we don't use it for everything, first of all, right? The rest of the planets. Yeah. But on, also, you guys, it's not even childlike language. It's creepier and sadder than that. So when you call breakfast brekkie, it's such a redditism. <laughs> it's like, oh, doggy does his snoozle boops. <laughs> no, that's yeah, you no, personifying that. That's, the, that. That, that's only like the tip of the iceberg, too. Like, I, I looked it up again just now. It is so fucking much of your slang. Teapot is Billy, for example. <laughs> Umbrella is a brawly. It's so Umbrella's fucking... what? Brawly. Yeah. Brawly? <laughs> yeah. Cr- I've never used Christmas that Christmas is Chrissy. Cigarette yeah, is Siggy. Oh, God. A f- <laughs> Chrissy? <laughs> really? Yep. Yeah. What are you what are you doing Jackson, for Chrissy? Craig, yeah, Jackson, normal. you just give everything like nicknames, like, oh, that's William and, and that's Herbert. Hey, I didn't do that. It. That, that, that specific, over there is my Samantha. Me. And you're it's, naming I things like it. people. Just, this is this is, has been for like a hundred years. Well, yeah, Why? well, I mean, I guess that's uh, that would make sense. Like if everyone was like an inmate back when you were founded or something, they didn't really speak very well. It could make sense. <laughs> or like a hundred years ago, it was just less discordy to use words that end in e. No, it's super dumb. Know. Like at no point did it ever make sense. Your cold beers are coldies. <laughs> God, <laughs> God you it's dog. We are a cold one. I know. Stubby. No, it's stubby. That's what we use. Oh right, yes. For uh, beer, stubby's a little further down the list, but yeah, that's another one. Still, so um, so dumb, darty. Uh, what is Durries? You have like four different E's for cigarettes. You have Siggies, Durries, um, Stubbies. No, not Stubby. That's beer. You have a lot- I feel like I'm in between two worlds here because I'm like, I'm basically living on like American time. So I interact with American media the most and talk to you guys. I, I don't think I've associated with like people outside of my house, like in Australia in like three years. I, so I'm not even, I'm not even keen on defending Australia. Yeah, and well, people were making this a point last week when I was defending, when I was trying to defend my Australian heritage, they were saying even like the Australians in the comments of the last video were like, don't, don't let Jackson speak for us. He's not a true Australian or whatever. So I, I feel like I've been kicked out of my own country. Is that and so I'm not bad American. though? When, when your country's yeah. using frothy for beer and uh, face, for Facebook. 
Like, if I feel bad. I feel like I, I don't have a country now. I feel like I've been abandoned. So they call... I also just looked up a list and it's... This segment is not over yet, Jackson. You call your laptops lappy. Uh, that is... <laughs> what? No, I've never heard that. I see I've that. never heard that. Naked. that one. Naked is nutty. Nudie, I nutty? guess. What's... All right, nutty's pretty funny for naked. I'll give him that one. No, no. I like I, I've one. never Andrew, heard any of those. I'm pretty you, sure I mispronounced sure it. It's like nudie. With two yeah. dudes. Oh, nudie. Oh, nudie. nudie. Yeah, oh, like a that's, nudie run. That's not nearly as funny. Nutty would have been funny. Yeah. Rally. Yeah, you call your relatives rally. My rallies are coming over. <laughs> no, that's a newer one. I don't use that. <laughs> your sweets are well, called what, rallies. The, Amer <laughs> the Americans just shorten everything. Like, they would say fam instead of family. That's the same kind of principle. <laughs> no, it's not. It's literally shortening it. You're making it a childish thing. My rallies are coming. Actually, I like this. It's, uh, that's the same principle. It's shorter. This one is the good. Relatives. Shark biscuit means kids at the beach. <laughs> That's a good yeah, one. That's that one's good cool. One. That's yeah. cool. That's, That's a good one. I don't, I've never heard that actually used, but it's a good one. It's still, yeah, you, you call a sick day off work a wait, sickie. Wait, wait, it's not shark biscuits or whatever, it's shark bickies. Mm. Oh, of course, yeah, sorry, shark brekkie. Right. Yeah. The, the sharky does a heckin' brekkie. <laughs> <laughs> your son, it's an American thing. You're getting the confused again. Your sunglasses are sunnies. <laughs> yeah. Why do you well, call your dinner right, tea? We, we do use what? That's not. That's a British thing. No, it says dinner is called tea. Mm-hmm. No, but I mean, we get that from like British heritage. That's like just a British thing in general. Hmm. I just call it din dins. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I the point rest my case, Jackson. Your slang is fucking atrocious. I mean I didn't make it. I don't feel attached to it. It's just how I was raised and, and grew up. I'm not gonna defend it. I know all the Australians listening will be angry that I didn't defend our wonderful country slang, but I just don't care. <laughs> oh, it's bad slang, you can't defend it. It's real bad. <laughs> Fair so dingo. True Aussie. So what's next? Anything else that has caught your eyes recently, boys? Yeah, so well, do you guys... Unfortunately, my... Oh, go ahead, Kai. No, you go ahead. I was just going to comment that my topic I was going to bring in was Kim Jong-un's 2000 woman harem. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm struggling. That. Yeah. Go ahead, Kai. I was just going to ask if you guys at all give a fuck about the Naughty Dog leaks. Or if you're like... You're actually... Were you guys you, excited you guys know? Yeah, or... Hmm? Well, so I, I've obviously read all of it and I watched it. It's me too. Yeah, it's me atrocious. Too. atrocious. Spoiler stuff. alert! If you hang guys. on, don't mention anything if you're gonna talk about the contents. No, I, I'm not. I was yeah, actually. Gonna, I, yeah. but I don't plan on spoiling. Okay. I was gonna take this in a different direction. Did you guys know Naughty Dog is breaking the law right now and fa uh, removing any videos that even mention the leaks? Is that breaking the law? Yeah, they can't do that because no one's like spoiling the game. They're just reporting that it happened and Naughty Dog is taking down those videos. Hmm. Wait, but people are taking like that. They're, they're all right to take down the actual leaks, right? What do you mean? Like yeah, if someone, you, you, yeah, you the cutscenes were uploaded. That's their copyrighted property and that's not. Yeah, so that, that, for that's, release. that's, that's fine definitely, to take. All right. Yeah. What they're yeah, taking so they're abusing the YouTube system like other uh, other companies have done. Yeah, but the, to take what, down people reporting on it. But the, the difference here is like uh, someone can take down a video that has them playing their game or like spoiling it. They they can do that. Naughty Dog can't like stifle news. Like one thing you'll notice yeah. is no no articles have come out about The Last of Us 2 leaks from like any major thing like Kotaku or Polygon that I've seen. Because Naughty Dog is taking all that shit down, plus videos and stuff like that, which is illegal. You can't, st you can't like not report news like that when it's not spoiling the game or giving anything away. It's like an actual illegal act that Naughty Dog's partaking in. Mm, no, I what, illegal as in like federal, federally legal, like federally illegal, seeing, not just like I illegal against YouTube's copyright. I don't know if they stopped now, but system. initially, when like when people were saying, "Hey, these leaks came out," a ton of YouTubers got striked down, and a lot of articles got taken down by mm. Naughty Dog. Yeah, I see a bunch of articles now, though. 
on Kotaku. It says, PSA, beware of massive Last of Us 2 spoilers from apparent leak. We're still not certain why The Last of Us Story 2 is leaked. Game industry segment next. Us games. There's there's again fucking Australians talking about gamies or whatever you guys call them. (laughs) Gamey wamey got leaky weaky. Australian (laughs) news. (laughs) (laughs) They should make a fucking Google Translate for your stupid language. (laughs) I mean, it's not it's not that hard to uh, figure out what we're trying to say. Yeah, you, you talk like Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, we don't. I, I, I genuinely don't hear most of this slang on a day to day basis. So. Mm. It's not that common. Mm. So, yeah, that, that's the fucking question remains. Like, do you guys care about the leaks? Were you guys excited for the game? Because I'm seeing a bunch of people just pissed off or like just sad. Uh, I love I Last of Us. I was yeah, excited. I, I don't think you can really fully judge the game by it because I mean it's just a it's just the script. Yeah. The presentation of it might be good, or the way they handle it might be good. If you yeah. if you boil most scripts down to the fundamental elements and remove all of the context, they're going to be like yeah, you know, well l- less. The, there's uh, a difference enjoyable. with Last of Us too. Without spoiling anything, it it really it, it has you. It has no, you don't. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, let's let's. How about this? How about this? Kaya, do you care? You apparently haven't read the leaks. No, I haven't read the leaks because I don't actually care. <laughs> but Kaya, I might still you, play it. I, you, I don't know. Okay. Don't okay. So it seems it seems it seems Kaya doesn't care, and the three of us have read the spoilers. No, it's still though. No, it's not worth talking about. There is a difference yeah, though. The, the script. It. It's nothing like politically driven that I think makes the script inherently doomed to fail or anything. I think it makes it. It, yeah, it's the direction decisions. That they yeah, it, it takes this yeah. bafflingly odd approach to just trying to villainize the first game that I think is a really weird angle. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It it feels less like the continuation or the branching off plot that we want and more just kind of also unrelated in a lot of things that happen where it's like, yeah, I could see how that has to do with the first I think it, game. I think it tried. I think it tried too hard to re- relate it to the first that's, game. To that's the where point I was where going. It does yeah. feel contrived. Where where a lot of it is like, yeah, I see how that relates, and I see what they're getting at, but that just feels like a why pick that over everything? Why that make that and those things such emphasized points? I think you it's know? even the main thing I think is going to be really hard for them to justify with the game is why it's going out of its way to make everyone in the first game like evil. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it demonizes everything and everyone from the first game for some reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I've, and, and again, it could it could be done well. I could see that working. Yeah, absolutely. But so far, it's not looking good. <laughs> Yeah, I could absolutely yeah, see it I've working in context. Garbage. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I've just enjoyed all the more so the drama around it than the leak itself. Like I said, I'm I don't mind. I don't. I might still play it or not. But reset era has just having a m- massive meltdown over this. So it's always entertaining to you know peek into that little barrel full of sepsis. It's always uh, in- when is reset era not having a meltdown though? Oh yeah, reset era is nuts these days, man. Yeah, 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 it's still as terrible as ever, apparently. So I try to sometimes keep up, but there's so much f- like rumors around this leak in particular is that it was a disgruntled employee who got fired and then leaked it. Oh, no, it wasn't an employee, Sony says. It wasn't even a leak. These are fake. Some are saying it's like, you know, the dude is somebody leaked apparently all of the cutscenes from a fucking development build of the game. It looks pretty legit. But there's a yeah, lot of... I, I've seen what you're talking about. That there was a lot of drama internally because they, they got rid of some writer woman who was good at her job and then replaced her with some shitty writer and all of that sort of stuff. So yeah, I'm interested to see. I heard they now announced an actual release date for June or July or something. Yeah, because it was indefinitely delayed due to coronavir- yeah. coronavirus like production issues. Mm. Um, but then the leak came out and they kind of realized, hey, this might impact our sales. We better actually get the game out. Mm. Um, it so they, they, it, like it was, it was pretty interesting how quickly they threw out that release date to uh, kind of save face, I guess, get people still pre-ordering and interested in it. 
Because I, I have heard a lot of people around the internet saying, oh, all right, this is so bad that I actually am going to cancel my pre-order and not play the game, which, you know, wow. try and true thing that constantly happens with these games. Like, remember the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 thing back in the day where where they had entire groups set up on Steam to boycott the game and then <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> they, were yeah. all, they were all playing the game come release. That was, uh, <laughs> that was because Steam didn't provide dedicated servers for the game and you still had to play P2P on a computer and the big boycott was, well, if, if we're not going to get our own servers on PC like every other shooter, we're not playing it. And then nearly everyone in the boycott group just ended up playing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, w it will be interesting to see if this does impact sales, but I can't won't. imagine it would too much. It won't. No, probably they not. are safely. No, I mean, think about all the people. Think about all the people. Think about the majority of fans who are going to say, "Oh, I don't want to get spoiled," and they just don't read it and don't look at it. So, even yeah. the ones who read yeah. it and really are angry, they're still not. They're still going to buy it. This is the release is oh, safely. 100%. The mm -hmm. release is safely outside of the two week window that gamers care. You guys remember when they were going to take down Blizzard for being a Chinese toy or something? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, Blizzard is dead now. Good work. Yeah. yeah you got him. <laughs> yeah. Got him. Yeah. Good work. Well, no. you know what they could have done if they really wanted to take them down? Maybe they could have switched to a Chinese VPN and started hitting up those servers. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would have worked, Kaya? Could you recommend one? A Chinese VPN? No. But I can recommend a good one. Or which sorry, is sorry, I mean a VPN that <laughs> offers Chinese servers. That's different. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I can offer... A How could have Naughty Dog protected their assets and stopped the leak from getting there out? There you go. What kind of security tools could they have used to keep their network encryption safe? Well, I don't want to make false claims now. That sounds very complicated and different from what we're talking about. But if you personally <laughs> want to stay safe on the internet and enjoy the plentiful fruits of the internet that are usually behind uh, region blocks, you should get ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN.com slash official is our link if you want to help us out and if you want to get a genuinely good VPN that offers you three months off of your uh, yearly subscription, which is one of the uh, cheapest options of really any VPN you can possibly imagine. It is cheap. It is worth it. You can, you know, you, you can kind of start gaming the system and get games a couple of hours earlier than your friends. You get to watch any movie on any region of Netflix, Hulu, uh, Amazon Prime, any streaming service, really. You know, I, I just sometimes, I hate it so much that stores themselves region lock you, like the PlayStation Store and such. I get rid of that stuff. And this VPN works on all your devices, by the way. Yes, you can get it. Uh, you can have a VPN on your console, on your router, your phone, your laptop, your whatever, your smart devices, uh, everything else you have in your house. And all you have to do is go to expressvpn.com slash official. They have like 150 something count, uh, servers in 150 something countries. You're always going to find the IP that you need. That's really all there is to say to it. Thank you, expressvpn.com slash official. I've been paying for their products for even longer than they've been sponsors. I'm very happy with them. And yes, it does keep you safe because it turns out that you, you'd rather not your ISP know all of your activities and then ask you, you know, you might think you're safe online, but then a month later you get a letter from your ISP saying, hey, we noticed that you've been on Pirate Bay. What's up with that, bro? <laughs> does ExpressVPN have right. IP version 6 support at Kaya? Yes. As far as I know. Oh, there you go. And you can get three months free on a one year package at expressvpn.com slash official. Thanks, ExpressVPN. Thank you. All right. Uh, what were we talking about? So back about? to uh, the Last of Us, the leaks. Yeah. Was well, there anything else to discuss? We kind of just like hit every everything to talk about there without spoiling it. So you guys are all going to play it? Yeah, of course. Probably, yeah. I, I mean, again, it could be good. It's just the narrative points yeah, don't make a whole lot of sense. I don't see mm -hmm. how they can really save that. Yeah, but even then, the game is too big to fail by this point. Even if the yeah. game sucks, it's going to be a sales juggernaut just because of how big Naughty Dog in the previous one is. Yeah. That's, yeah. You might see some angry so, Metacritic comments, but that's that'll be it. 
That's all the journalists are going to laud it and everybody's probably for the most part going to like it and enjoy it. Or do you think people are going to, because of this pre-launch kind of fiasco where people are hating on the game before it's come out and they don't like the leaks or whatever, do you think people are going to feel more enticed to to praise the game after it's released? Like it's it surprised them maybe that it wasn't as bad as what the leaks made it out to be, which is entirely possible. I feel maybe. that it's going to be, when it comes out, it's going to be majority of people are like, this game is great, I love it, they don't even mention the leaks or care, and then you'll have that sect where they're like oh the leaks were true this game's dog shit i hate that they did this and that and i hate that this happens and of course you'll have people who bring in political stuff where it's like oh they're pandering to sjw's and blah 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 and then over time that audience will shift into like the last jedi audience or that shit where they're like oh it's actually a masterpiece if you look at it like the batman v <laughs> superman audience where if you really analyze what they did they made possibly the greatest game ever made because of these terrible decisions look let me break it down i i think it's following into that pattern is there actually a community of a uh, batman versus superman enthusiasts? yes there's a community of everything yeah, there, we bring this up constantly. there is a community of people who think Zack snyder is a creative genius and possibly the greatest <laughs> director of all time and they unironically think that the man of steel tr is a trilogy or was it th those two movies is there a third one just two mm. it is just two they think those two movies are some of the greatest movies ever made i don't believe that well, i'm gonna look into that right now <laughs> i can't i can't believe that well, there's a lot of people who are rallying for the Snyder cut because they believe that. Um, so Zack Snyder said that he had his own cut of the movie that was way, way better and incredible. And they're rallying for it, saying, yeah, release the Snyder cut. It'll be the greatest movie of all time. He's a genius. The best director. Mm, I'm very doubtful. D didn't he go through some sh like some traumatic shit during the, the filming of Batman vs. Superman? Yeah. I think it's daughter died yeah. or something something oh. horrible oh yeah yeah oh well, fuck him <laughs> <laughs> he made batman bad wow you're not wrong so i looked yeah i told holy you holy shit there's even there's a even an article from hypable or something batman vs superman is still one of the best comic book movies ever made i told you there's a whole community saying that Zack snyder is like a fucking god and everything he makes is incredible. <laughs> Every year, this guy. I don't, celebrates I don't know why you're surprised release. about that. I, I'm I don't very know why you're surprised about that because people constantly make these groups online. Everyone has an opinion. Yeah, but I mean, it's hard to have the opinion that this is a movie that's one of the best comic book movies. A comic book fan is going to see every comic book movie ever, and like objectively, this has to be on the lowest end. Yeah, but not with the but Snyder cut. It won't not. be. Hmm. Hmm. Just waiting on that Snyder Cut. I mean, what does make a superhero movie objectively good? Charlie likes well, it. Well, the same thing that would make <laughs> yeah. a good movie good. Yeah, but... I mean, it, just because it's a superhero movie doesn't mean that it has to take any different tenets to make it good. If it has good characters and story and cinematography, then it's a good movie. Mm, mm. No, I think different things make different genres good. There's different, uh, like... What makes a superhero movie good wouldn't fit well for, like, a romance movie, for example. See, I disagree. You can have small, more subtle superhero movies that work. What was that, um... I'll give you a good... Kick God, ass. what the fuck... No, what the fuck is it? Not... Kick, I mean, Kick-Ass was fine. It's a movie with the guy from The Office who plays Dwight. It's, uh... Oh, God. He has a oh. hammer. Yeah, uh... Yeah. Thor. What? What movie? Fuck. Ellen Page is in it, too. Yeah, Super. Super. Thank you, uh, Patreon chat. Yeah, Super is technically a superhero movie. Like, he doesn't have, like, flight or, you know, super amazing superpowers, but it's about a superhero, and it's a really, really great movie, and it's very small and intimate and not incredibly big budget blockbuster, but it's a great movie. Well, it's the, okay, that's, that's a little different. He's not, like, meant to be a superhero. He is a guy who beats people with a hammer that he thinks deserve it. Yeah, a real superhero. Fair. Mm. Yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds like a but, good, like a good action movie, maybe, or a good drama. I don't know. But what makes a good superhero, like, uh, what was the most recent one? Avengers, good, wouldn't directly correlate to what makes a romance movie good, for example. Mm. I don't know. I I think that 
I think genre specificities like that are just kind of sprinkles on the cake. Like it, you're, if your movies, oh yeah, I I, I yeah. know there's still good filmmaking behind it. Like yeah. you know, there, good lighting, for example, the good uh, fundamentals of filmmaking. Yeah. But still, like the more specific things are different. I think I think what you're saying is that superhero movies need specific things to qualify as superhero movies, and then they also, in addition, need you know to be good movies. I don't know yeah, about the second one, but yeah, they do all. I mean, in a romance movie, it just wouldn't make sense to have a terrible, god awful, boring 30 minute CGI battle at the end of every movie where a major city gets destroyed by aliens every single time. It just. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. stuff is exclusive I, I to the movies. But I, yeah, I, I acknowledge that. I just also don't think that that's excusable because it's a superhero movie. Like, if you have those big set pieces, a lot of people will watch Avengers or Man of Steel and they'll watch Superman punch the fucking bad guy for literally 30 minutes and then go, this is the best movie ever because Superman <laughs> punched the, the bad guy. And I'm like, no, it, it was still shitty. Like, it was cool, but it wasn't like you know, good or well-written or entertaining. Take that back, you son of a bitch. Snyder's a genius. He's more man than you could ever be, Andrew. <laughs> the weird thing is, so you've really got me in this rabbit hole. I was reading a lot of reviews from the people saying, like, Batman vs. Superman is the best movie ever made. All of them mm -hmm. are like, Zack Snyder is the nicest man this world has <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> like, for some reason, it's more than just his, like, directing they love. It's him. They yeah, love he, I told him. you. I told you. Zack Snyder has a cult where people think he's yeah, the so greatest just director ever. ever. I and guess, they... they has Go he ahead. done something nice that I don't know about? Was he, like, giving away fucking free face masks or some shit? Like, why are they hailing him as, like, this benevolent god? He made, he made Superman v. Batman. Mm. True. I know that. That's true. And Sucker Punch, he put... He made a what was 300. That made actress from... Yeah, that, oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. He made Jared Butler look ripped and fucking yeah. awesome. But why I mean, do they the, keep going about how nice and cool he is and how? Because <laughs> he's a great why. guy. They met him at the mall once and he gave him a tootsie roll and they thought he was ba the best. I don't know. His daughter died. That makes everyone nice. Yeah. Why does it? Why? Well, yeah, but Charlie. Why do? Why does anyone think they know like celebrities or popular figures? True. Mm. Or us? Well, yeah. yeah, but I don't know anything about Zack Snyder. I personally don't know anything about Zack Snyder, and I've certainly never heard of him going above and beyond in terms of being like a nice guy, like Keanu well, Reeves. No, that's what I mean. They're just fucking creepy stands. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good example, though, Charlie. Keanu Reeves. Think how many people are like, oh, Keanu Reeves is just the, the nicest, coolest dude, and I bet we'd be great friends, and I want to hang out with him. It's like, you don't know him. You could meet him in person, and he could be a total asshole. You have no idea. So. Well, I don't know about that. That's a bit far. You yeah, have Zach no Snyder idea. could never no, be an asshole. He made Batman vs. Superman, bro. And 300. <laughs> Jared Butler had fucking great abs in that. He did. Yeah, they all did. did. That was such you a cultural have, phenomenon. You two could have great abs with all the money you save using honey. That's right. If you shop online a lot and also do stomach crunches every time you make an online purchase, well, then you're going to be possibly doing a hell of a lot more of them with all the money you're saving on honey, leading to even more online shopping. Honey is God, a... Think about how many copies of 300 you could buy with that. <laughs> One day you'll have 300 copies of 300. <laughs> and that's because Honey is the free online shopping tool that saves you money online. Honey automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. You can imagine shopping on one of your favorite websites like Target, Best Buy, Macy's, eBay, Walmart, Etsy, Amazon. Oh, you know, just all the biggest ones ever. And when you go to checkout, you'll see this little little drop down that says apply coupons. You click it, you wait a few seconds, and boom, every promo code from the internet is scanned in to give you the best possible price. This is a true story. I saved $60 on headphones Jesus. yesterday with Honey. $60. That's a full free video game. I bought a pair of high-end headphones for something I'm doing, and I went, eh, they're a little pricey. I'm kind of on the fence. And Honey said, nah, man, $60 off. That's a whole video game. God damn. Mm -hmm. By doing nothing. It just popped down while I was on Amazon and said, oh, hey, you know, you know that thing you were buying? Boom. Got, I got you. That is pretty 60 incredible. Bucks, it's seri like, 60 seriously, bucks. 60 bucks off for doing absolutely nothing blows my mind. Honey just bought God you damn. your copy of The Last of Us 2.
There you go. <laughs> Which we've amped and hyped up so much this episode. <laughs> So Honey has found over 18 million members with over $2 billion in savings, and it supports over 30,000 stores online. I just want to reiterate it because it's real, and this was yesterday. 60 fucking dollars off of a pair of high-end headphones for doing absolutely nothing. And I'll give you a little, you, I'll give you a little disclaimer, because this does happen. Sometimes, because you have to go through a different manufacturer, you wait a couple extra days in shipping with Honey. Oh, no. I, I think I can have a little bit of patience to save. I mean, if you buy in bulk, you could literally be saving hundreds of dollars doing nothing. Not using Honey is literally passing up free money. It's free to use and installs in a few seconds. It's backed by PayPal, so you know that you can trust it. You can get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash official. Save money. What are you doing? Why are you not doing it? Fuck. Mm-hmm. And sixty dollars. I'm still I'm yeah, still flabbergasted. Yeah. And they. I mean, it, it's it's free. It takes like yeah. little to no effort, and it's just it saves you money at at a click of a button. And they have coupons. No way you wouldn't use it. They have coupons on the most obscure shit too. You'll buy fucking like body wash. You'll buy you'll buy like cleaning detergent for your garbage disposal. And they're like, yeah, we saved you two bucks. Why not? It's it's the best. Love right. honey. Love honey. What else do you guys have? Uh, I feel like I had another one, but I forgot. OK, yeah, what were we, talking about? we were talking about Zack Snyder's Snyder? cult. <laughs> I'll just ask How them. cool Zack Snyder is. Have you guys <laughs> seen the Transformers shit yet? This. I'm, I'm slowly starting to notice it more and more, but I think all of the bronies became Transformer fans. No. Yeah, Explain. actually, I have noticed a correlation between the two. That is interesting. Not a, Why do you think that is, Kaya? I, I don't fucking know. Play smack dab into their autism, but there are so many... I noticed there are so many podcasts alone where there's men sitting down with their bodies and all their houses are just... Their entire house is filled with nothing but Transformers toys. They have Transformers conventions where men meet to talk about Transformers toys. One of these podcasts... Oh, I don't, that's so sweet. Uh, don't they do that for like every nerdy hobby ever? Like they do that with Star Wars yeah. and yeah. Star Trek. They probably have a fucking Zack Snyder convention. They, they do. They do it for superheroes. Action figures of Snyder. Yeah, like every, every nerdy hobby has that kind of people. I mean, it's, it's true. I wouldn't be surprised yeah, yeah. if there, there was a SnyderCon. <laughs> I'm going to SnyderCon next Probably, year. Probably, but this <laughs> is... So this is... But this goes into brony territory where they, they commission art about their favorite... They all have their transonas, their transformers, sonas, whatever the fuck they call them, the whatever car they want to be. I think that's what a transsona yeah, is. Yeah, transsona has a lot of other implications to it. Whatever, kinda. you get the point. <laughs> They, like I'm look, I'm staring at one of their podcasts right now. It's called Radio Free Cybertron, and they have 672 <laughs> episodes. 672. Trying to free Cybertron. That's a Radio cool name. Free Cybertron. They have 670. What, is, it, is Cybertron being oppressed at the moment? <laughs> What's happening down at Cybertron? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna play this for you guys. Well, Cybertron is, uh, I believe, the world where the Transformers come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Let me just play a random and episode. Then the Decepticons here. took over, and then the uh, Optobots. Whoa. I mean, the, what, what are they Optobots? called? Oh, I'm sorry, Jackson. I didn't know you were such an expert on Transformers. I apologize. It's, is it Autobots? Yeah, Autobots, Autobots and I, I used to know this. I used to like Transformers. Autobots left the, the country and they fled to Earth. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Does anybody they know Transformers? They immigrated to Germany next door. <laughs> <laughs> the country? <laughs> they got deported. <laughs> Cybertron got destroyed in the war between the Autobots and the Decepticons. That's what I just said. They, they didn't literal, leave the country on their the own intro, volition. They have song. You have to watch they one did. episode They fled to on Teletro the Teletron ship, whatever it was. Tel Teletran? Uh, Kaya, play the clip. What clip? Oh, he disconnected. What, do we have live there footage from the fleeing of Cybertron that he's going to play? Ka Confirming Ka Sorry, what okay? I've just said? Okay, I'm going to play it now. Hang on. That's just super cool. Yeah. We're not, yeah, we're not associated with them. I don't know them as far as I know. Maybe I do, but I don't know them as Funby Studios. But... uh a lot of neat stuff here. So once I have my 3D printer up and running, I will be making some of this stuff. Uh, 
Very cool. Definitely worth checking out. It's on Patreon. It's talking about printing uh, out. Funby Studios. F U N B I E. Transformers. Uh, it is, I think, a that's better cool. option. Than let's let's do that, that, that too. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. You're just a bully, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Let him enjoy yeah. his face. Really pretty. Yeah, I can't wait. It's beautiful. Um. It, oh my god. Whatever. I don't even want to listen to them nerd out over this shit. I don't. I don't know the. I was skimming random episodes of this shit, and they were genuinely sexualizing these goddamn uh, robots. I almost said animals, but, you know, God knows they do that, too, probably. Aren't they, like, animal transformers, too? That's well, Beast Wars. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was a big yeah, flop. Yeah. They're, still, they're still metal, though, right? They're not actual animals. They're I just, don't know. Well, the transformers, transformers that disguise animals. themselves as animals, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I still don't feel comfortable to, uh, like labeling these guys as animal fuckers just because yeah. they're like playing with transformers. These, actually, these guys <laughs> seem genuinely harmless. I don't get what the problem yeah. is. Yeah, I don't know why you're up their ass about it. Really? It's a good, it's a good hobby, but they, it's pro not a big they probably deal. they probably Look, work twelve hour days and they come um, home and play with it <laughs> with, with their figures for two hours and that's like yeah. all the enjoyment they get. Just let them have Kaya, it. A lot of a lot of the people in these kind of fandoms do definitely deserve to be ridiculed. Like the guy who hosts the big Star Wars podcast and he threw a temper tantrum on air because he wasn't invited to Disney World. Like, the, those people, yes, make fun of them, but these guys are just talking about how they like Transformers. What's the problem? No, so l I've literally never seen a Transformers <laughs> brony, a trony like these guys on Twitter trony. or anywhere. I don't know, that's what I'm calling yeah, them. But, but I've not ever seen even a single one who wasn't a massive pervert who didn't also have an event diagram and overlap with all the other kinks including bestiality, adult baby diaper shit, bronyism, whatever the hell. So all of these guys, somehow, there must be a correlation. What is it about cheap plastic children's toys that makes these people hoard them? They call it collecting, but it's, it's hoarding. And they're all just these cheap, shitty toys they pay hundreds of dollars for. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that it brings them happiness and enjoyment yeah. and fulfillment. <laughs> Clearly not. I also don't understand the comparison between guys liking Transformers and bronies. The thing with bronies was they would, like, actively go to these conventions to, like, have orgies and stuff and talk about the ponies. They'd put, like, little fuck holes in their ponies and stuff. Yeah. From, from everything I've right. seen from that Cybertron, is, that's not the case. That is what I'm talking about here. These guys have their own weird... <laughs> Transformers subcommunity on Twitter where they you guys know those goofy anime cartoon drawings of like women that have car sized tits and like their nipples are dicks and such so mm -hmm. like dragons fucking cars yeah or whatever. imagine that but with Transformers that's basically yeah. what then why they're did up you to. choose the one I, I think why did you choose the one that's not that I think you're yeah, uh, this podcast just yeah. sounds like Transform no, okay, because I didn't, I didn't know the uh, exact time code or the timestamp for when they talk about pervy shit, but I'm also not going to search for it right now because it's literally a thousand hours worth of material that they've released about fucking Transformers toys. I don't know. I'm just thinking... I think you're extrapolating a small part of the community to the entire community. There's yeah. literally millions and millions of Transformers fans, and this sounds like you're talking about like 30 people. Millions and, and millions? Like I'm not talking the about the children. Yes. All the bronies wanted to fuck Twilight. Twilight. No, there's millions whatever, and millions right. of adult fans. You got to remember, this shit came out in the '80s. The people, most people yeah. who like Transformers now are the people who grew up with it. Same with like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers. S fucking Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars. That's another good one. Okay, but I don't Star see Trek. Right, but I don't see many people who fetishize the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Although maybe. Oh, you do I not look hard enough. I think this is going to be the next... I will shoot you down right now. I'm an expert in this field. They fetishize everything, dude. I've seen okay. plenty of turtle dick. Okay. I'm, everything I'm gets you, fan art that's porn. I'm getting you 50 bucks. Oh, you found Andrew, I guess. Getting you guys 50 bucks. <laughs> I finally activated. This, huh? is, this will be the next brony thing. I'm betting you 50 bucks. I'm uh, what well, it's not gonna fucking kickstart right now. Transformers has been around for four yeah. years. No, the I thing think that happened with the brony thing is they got a new series that was really popular. Friendship is magic is what directly kicked off bronies. They revitalized the property like after I think twenty years of it being dead. That's why it started. Transformers though has never stopped. It's still going. I don't know, but it can still is spread. Is it still going? I don't think it would happen. I, I know, like the fa fan base is still there, but is it, does it? Is there still like shows, like Transformers yeah. shows? 
like probably new movies are in the works supposedly oh, new yeah. animated movies well, yeah I knew, I knew the movies it's entirely but i don't associate with those new movies like the michael bay movies with like actual like these transformer fans you're talking about michael ba oh yeah no no, those aren't even the ones that they're into. They, like, they're genuinely just into the children's cartoons. Yeah, like the old cartoons. Yeah. I just yeah, don't, yeah. I just don't think it's gonna be. I don't know why you think they're gonna be like bronies or something like degenerate. There was even like uh, I looked it up because I wanted to make sure I was accurate. They announced a sexy Windblade Transformer, and the fans hated it because they didn't like their Transformers being sexualized. So now that toy doesn't exist. Like I think sexy it's the opposite. Windblade. They want them. Okay, yeah, that so, was the name of the bot. Okay, I'm still betting you. So let's say, okay. let's revisit this six months from now. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Re revisit what? Well, the Transformers, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's been a fan base for 40 years. Do you think there's going to be much difference in six months where everyone's yeah. fucking I, you guys like, seem to have the, metal plastic you're dolls? Also, you guys seem to have uh, you're also missing... the impression that fan bases never change or new things never happen in a fan base. They can still, this can still go in any direction, including a brony direction. But the difference is that the anthropomorphization isn't the same. Like, if you look at a pony from My Little Pony, it's got the big anime eyes and the human-style face and the personalities and whatever. But with Transformers, they're still big, square, clunky robots, so you're not going to get the same kind of, like... Uh, I, I also feel like wanting to fuck a pony is slightly... <laughs> And probably Careful. like uh, pretty, pretty <laughs> significantly worse. Worse. Yeah, that that's than wanting to fuck like a robot car. That's absolutely also correct. The <laughs> pony is you're reaching because the other thing is that the ponies reach into way other areas of psychology. You have bestiality. You have anime characters. You have fictional wife. You, like all this shit. You have the furry community on board. The blah blah blah. What does Transformers have? Robot fuckers, and that's about it. Michael Bay. And Michael Bay. And uh, <laughs> Zack Snyder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Zack well. Snyder, of course. <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine a Transformers He's movie made everything. by Zack Snyder of all people? It'd be the greatest movie of all time, according everything to the internet. Everything Zack Snyder touches is gold. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> What's... Yeah. Okay. I, uh, go ahead. If you guys would... <laughs> Whatever, let's say a billionaire comes up to you and says, I'm going to fund your movie project, but I want you to make a movie of your nightmares, just the worst dreck that you would feel forced to sit through. What would you guys, who would you hire to direct it and what would it be about? Oh, I... I, I Zack Snyder this. directs my parents fucking. <laughs> okay, let's say... What, do they need advice? <laughs> No, no cop outs like oh, I don't want you know somebody ass raping me on in a movie. Zach. Let's just like an action movie or something. <laughs> mm. How about this? Okay, let's say <laughs> Zack Snyder playing the role of Andrew's dad, fucking, <laughs> <laughs> and my mom's played by Joss Whedon. Yeah. Let's say okay, which director would you match with? Which already established movie franchise to just create the most awful product movie all right all right uh stanley kubrick directing like a real life full actor like a uh, drama based around the teletubbies that could be incredible right mm -hmm. so like is that what you're looking for no i feel like you would like that somehow why would i why would i like that i don't know did, do you not like uh, Stanley Kubrick? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going the direction of the Teletubbies. Like, I still like the Teletubbies. <laughs> no, no, I mean... So, my point was more a shitty director. Like, I would, like I said, I would take Zack oh, Snyder and director. one of those shitty CG Transformers movies. And there you go. That's something that I would feel in pain watching. Or maybe... Oh, God. Zack Snyder and... Uh, what was that dumb movie? One Up Player? Ready One Player? Ready Player One. Ready yeah. Player One. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I've actually... I, I've got one. Talking uh, talking about shitty directors brought that up. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan mm -hmm. directing like a truther uh, drama Ooh. about 9-11 being fake or something. Ugh. I think That's that could be bad. incredible. Like the, the twist he could take. So Kaya, if you're, if you're saying to make like the worst movie I could think of, the one that would like physically pain me to watch... Mm -hmm. So, so I like Metal Gear Solid. So what I would say is the Metal Gear Solid movie, 
directed by Joss Whedon, starring Aziz Ansari as Solid Snake. I, I think that's, that's very I couldn't specific, sit, yeah. I, I hate those two. I, I can't fucking stand them. That would, that would physically pain me. I hate, yeah, I think he's terrible. Those I think he's really pixel, unfunny though. and annoying. Yeah. And I think Joss Whedon's an incredibly overrated director, and I hate most of his stuff. I, what is, I can't even think of a single movie off the top of my head he's directed. Avengers. Avengers. Joss Whedon do Firefly. Yeah, oh. Avengers. Yeah. Oh. Who did Firefly? Jo uh, Joss Sweden did Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He did. That's right. Um, Wait, does that mean he did Lost? He didn't do Lost. No. Wait, uh, so Joss Whedon must have only done the first Avengers, right? Because wasn't yes. Ultron? Okay. I believe. Oh, he yeah. Joss Whedon did do Firefly. I was right. Yeah. Fuck. Hmm. I should have stuck more firmly with yeah. that. He um he took over in another movie as well. I think was it Justice League. Where some director bowed out and he took uh, over. Yeah. No, yeah. wasn't it Brian Singer? Was it Brian Singer? I don't remember. I don't know. Mine would be Quentin Tarantino directs a new mummy movie. Oh, <laughs> that, that's what you. That's, that's what you want. What you though want, that right? is a great. No, I fucking pick. hate that. He he would take out all of the fun and charm of mummy. Uh, that is a great 100%. director pick. I yeah, entirely right. forgot about that cocksucker. Yeah. You're telling me you don't want to watch a new mummy where Brendan Fraser shows up on camera and he goes, ah, what a great day of exploring mummies. And then he props his feet on the table barefoot and the camera <laughs> yeah. zooms in on it. He like, <laughs> he finds a mummy and just, <laughs> he just, he just, he finds a mummy and only unravels its feet just to stare at them. Mm, perfectly preserved. <laughs> Yum. You just hear, hear him sniffing from behind the camera. <laughs> just deeply inhaling. You, you're watching the film and it's like an editing mistake as soon as his feet go on the table. You hear Tarantino go, oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> the director's commentary. <laughs> the camera starts rocking. The director's commentary is just him unzipping. And then you hear the fucking <laughs> <laughs> heavy breathing. <laughs> My God. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. That man sure loves fate. Him and... Who was your pick, Kaya? Uh, Zack Snyder still. But no, I'm changing. I changed my mind. Uh, I'm joining you. Quentin Tarantino directs literally anything is just fucking boring. Mm hmm. I shouldn't say that. You know what? He's honestly not that bad, but I, I think what <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> yeah. No, like his movies. <laughs> I don't like his mind. movies, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not as if he's just. Well, he's he's, he's make objectively, the so even quickly. if you don't like him or not, he is objectively a very talented director. Oh, 100%. I yeah. just think yeah. that like, yeah. uh, the last few movies have made have been super boring. Like I hated Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The only good parts of that movie were Leo and Brad Pitt. Everything else was just I think, two main parts. I think the chat here the is characters, right. Them, they as got actors, not the movie. Val here got it right. I. It's not the movies themselves that I really truly hate, although I don't like them, but it's the fucking fans who just cannot drop his cock out of their fucking mouths. Well, why are you taking it out on... Why, why, did, why do you take that out on Tarantino? Because I think that, so that if he directed literally anything, including whatever the hell, some shitty Teletubbies Transformers movie, his fans would do the, this is the most amazing, classy, if you don't like this, you're ignorant and you're objectively wrong and don't understand cinematography because he is a walking god among directors. That's still not Tarantino's fault. Yeah, that's the fans. I know, you're but... You're perfectly right to I, hate fans. Fans suck. If I had to pick and choose and make him just ruin a movie for me and make it insufferable for me to sit through, knowing that there's probably a million Reddit threats about a, that terrible movie about how awesome it is. Yeah, that's a good pick for me. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood still bad. Did you like it, Jackson? I didn't like it. I didn't dislike it. It was, like, average. Mm, I didn't like it. Is it one of those movies where, like, you appreciate it, but it's not very fun to watch? No, it's a movie you'd only appreciate if you're like a millionaire slow. in Hollywood already. Like it's uh, it's not like a relatable movie or anything like that. It's a movie that like changes. Some I don't think movies really need to be relatable. No, I, I agree. But like it's a movie that it's just purposeless. It has no drive. Yeah, it has yeah. no mission. It, it just has two good characters that have great chemistry. That's it. And then yeah. a bunch of random it, shit. If it if it weren't for you know the masterful directing and and the performances from right. Leo and and uh, 
the other guy, Brad Pitt. It, it would have been a bad film in my opinion, but they they brought it up to an average film for me. I still think it was a bad film. There is nothing in that movie that happens that is at all entertaining or any semblance of a purpose or a drive. It is just <laughs> an actor in Hollywood doing some roles with his friend. And they're they're fun together. That's it. That was the title on the poster. <laughs> and Charles Manson is there for you know his little cult's there for a second, and that's it. It's fucking boring and not very good. There is a lot of feet though, so there is something to enjoy. Yeah, Margot Robbie puts up a smelly souls up on the cinema seats. Yes, yeah, that was a great scene. And in the car, she puts her feet up on the dashboard facing the yeah, camera. Yeah, they're all filthy. They made a point to make them feel yeah, there's definitely a lot of dirt in there. There's there's some wear and tear. <laughs> is, that, is that how he likes his feet? Is dirty? <laughs> well, I think so, right? Well, he, they'd like, have like, fetish just like their, yeah. their feet dirty? I guess. Do I you guys know. think him and Dan Schneider maybe have like a private WhatsApp WhatsApp group or a Telegram group where they just send each other underage foot, foot pics? Oh, that's a good question. I wonder what uh, Dan Schneider's doing right now. I don't know. Joking off. <laughs> I'm gonna look him up right now. Let's let's take let's take a little uh, Dan Schneider corner here. It's been a while since we've seen anything from him. <laughs> Imagine if he was in prison for like forty years and none of us had a clue. <laughs> uh, filmography. Just well, he's not the... dead, so that's surprising. Well, he, yeah, he's not. He's been elected. He's not done shit since 2014. Sam and Cat was his last um, project, and even then, he he's didn't direct it. He's active on social media. Is it? He's opened a foot mm -hmm. massage clinic. <laughs> <laughs> that would be incredible. That would be like like taking the kink and making it your bitch kind of thing. Like who ca who cares what the internet thinks? I'm gonna own it. I'd be I'd be impressed by that if if they did like own it. It's like it. a fucking children's daycare with an extra foot spa attached right next to it. Free pedicures for all your children. Is pedicure the one for the feet or the hands? Whatever. That's yeah, yeah, you got it. Manicure right. is hands, yeah. pedicure is okay. yeah. uh, it says He still has his social medias, that's about it. On March twenty sixth, <laughs> twenty eighteen, Nickelodeon announced that it would not be extending its production deal with Schneider and Schneider's bakery. Okay, well I guess they did wow. cut ties. They couldn't afford the foot jobs. <laughs> oh man, maybe Schneider's not a bad guy after all. He wrote the film Good Burger. I never knew that. Oh, wow. That Dave. makes sense. It was a Nickelodeon movie. Deadline. Yeah. He also wrote Big Fat Liar with Frankie Minnis. Damn, maybe he's a pretty swell fellow. Wow. Mm. He did iCarly. Oh, uh, well. Eh. Deadline. The first to report about Nickelodeon parting ways with the Schneider also reported that there were complaints about Schneider's alleged behavior, including his alleged well-documented tamper issues for years and his tweets showing photos of his young actress's feet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the now dumbest shit there. where he literally just told his fans to write his name on the bottom of their feet and sent him photos. This fat, sweaty man on Twitter just asking for underage feet photos. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, he's married. I didn't know that. Oh, good for him. Yeah, congratulations. I didn't know. He settled down with a nice pair of feet. <laughs> all right can we can we uh can we wrap up yeah we can wrap up i need to go piss all right thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode you can head on over to patreon.com slash the official podcast if you want to see our dirty feet not really we don't have that oh. up there but you can listen to bonus episodes you've got plenty of bonus episodes over there yeah i'll i, I can upload food uh, yeah, feet photos if anybody is if nope. that all right there we if go that'll make people subscribe <laughs> fuck it i already have a piss pod yeah. Oh, by the way, update, boys. I my side project is now at thirty-five bucks that we've made. Whoa! Whoa. Mm -hmm. Congrats! Thank Damn! Thank you. I'm so jealous. Don't want to flex too much, you know. Don't want to seem braggadocious. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. I think I said everything I needed mm -hmm. to say. Yeah, probably. All right. patreoncom slash official podcast. Head on over there if you want to see stuff. All right. See Bye. Ya. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye.